Beg your pardon. Your name wouldn't happen to be Jimbo, would it? Yeah? Who's asking? Miles Fordham, private investigator. Can't a guy enjoy his shore leave without being harassed by the law? I've done nothing wrong. I didn't say you had, and I'm most certainly not the law. I just want to ask you a few questions. All right, fine. You know Ronan Spey? I knew him, yeah. Knew him? He and I haven't spoken recently. In about a month, actually. Things didn't go so well last time. How do you mean? Let's just say we didn't part on the best of terms. He made it very clear that he didn't want to speak to me again. Were you aware that Ronan was murdered? What? No, when? What happened? He was shot outside a tavern in Chumley four nights ago. Chumley? What was he doing there? I was hoping perhaps you could tell me. I honestly don't know. Ronan hardly went out, and he especially never crossed the river. Why was that? I think he was just too scared of the world to go out and see it for himself. He was happy enough reading about it in his books or collecting things I brought him back from my travels. Honestly, that's what I liked most about him. He was just an average, boring man. It was just the sort of balance I needed in my life. That's pretty much the exact same reason I always enjoyed working with you, Miles. You and Ronan had a special relationship, didn't you? Mr. Fordham, we're in an underground club. You don't have to tap dance around it. Yes, Ronan and I were a couple, at least up until last month. What happened, if you don't mind me asking? We had a misunderstanding. Ronan thought I had been seeing someone else. He was extremely jealous. I tried to explain that he had it all wrong, but he wouldn't hear me out. I was going to give him some time to cool off, but, well, that's not going to happen now, is it? If it's any consolation, I found a letter you wrote him, which he still kept in his desk. Damn. Thank you for telling me that. Where does the name Jimbo come from? It's just a nickname. My real name is James Bogroff. And what is it you do? I'm a sailor. I thought you detective types were supposed to be extra observant. Shouldn't you be able to tell me what my occupation was just by looking at my fingernails or something? Sorry to disappoint. Perceptiveness is important in my line of work, but I'm also just a man. I think perhaps Jimbo has been reading too many of those detective stories in Brentwell's. Does the name Priscilla mean anything to you? Yes, that's my ship, the SS Priscilla. I see. Did Ronan know about it? Of course. He always used to ask me to bring him back some exotic souvenir. Do you have any opinions about the recent election? Not really. I'm usually way at sea, so I don't keep up with politics. The sea's got our own laws. Anyway, I can't vote, so it's really none of my concern. But you're still affected by the decisions the Prime Minister makes. Not very fair, is it, Mr. Fordham? No, I suppose it isn't. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Miles, have you ever noticed that this Jimbo fellow fits the description of the man loitering outside the taxidermy shop? The barmaid told us she saw someone matching that description at the Raven on election night. Not only that, Priscilla just so happens to be the name of the ship Jimbo works on. And the pistol used to murder Ronan has the initials JB etched on it. It could be a coincidence, but I think it's quite reasonable to consider him as a suspect. Prayer candles? People think lighting one of these is going to solve their problems. If only it were that easy. Also, what happens if they go out? Does that mean your prayer gets cancelled? Shh. What? It's an important question! The more I think about it, the more I want to test my theory about prayers being cancelled if the candles go out. That's all of them. Hope you made a wish. What a racket! I'm glad you're not a member of this church. Sitting through Sunday Mass would drive me insane. I beg your pardon. Are you Tom Puffin? I am. How may I help you? 
Miles Fordham, private investigator. I wanted to ask you a few questions. Questions? Have I done something wrong? No, Mr. Puffin. I simply believe you may have some information that I need. Very well, then. What were you doing on election night, Mr. Puffin? Election night? Well, that was ages ago, wasn't it? It was four nights ago, to be precise. Oh, <laughs> you have to understand. I have trouble recalling what I ate for breakfast this morning, let alone what happened four nights ago. Well, isn't that convenient? Do try to remember, Mr. Puffin. It's quite important. Um, well, I know I voted at my local polling place, the Silent Raven. And then... Uh, I'm not sure, actually. Do you know anything about the murder outside the Silent Raven? <coughs> murder? Yes, a man was shot. Did you see or hear anything? I, I don't remember. I don't think so, no. How long were you at the Raven that evening? Not very long, I don't think. I went, voted, stayed for a drink, and then I left. You recall what you did the rest of the evening? Not specifically. I probably went home and went to bed, like I always do. Do you recognize the man in this photo? Is that... No. No, never mind. What is it? Well, for a moment, I thought it was someone else, but I was clearly mistaken. So you don't recognize this person, then? Afraid not. Who is he? His name is, or rather was, Ronan Lespay. What? Is he dead? He is. I'm trying to find out who killed him. Well, I hope you find your man, Mr. Fordham. Are you in the habit of using opium, Mr. Puffin? What? Well, why would you think that? I met your friend Darius. He told me you share a pastime. All right, yes. I do enjoy a visit to the opium den from time to time. From time to time? More like morning, noon, and night. Have you found the drug has had any adverse effects? Memory loss, for example. I admit I'm not quite as quick as I used to be. <laughs> but without it, I'm in constant pain. Is that right? I fell off a horse when I was 15. And ever since then, my back's not been right. The doctors haven't been able to help. Poppy is my only comfort. I wish there were another way. Uh, it might be worth seeking a more professional opinion about the effects of opium. Does the name Priscilla mean anything to you? Priscilla? What does that have to do with anything? The name has come up in my investigation. Is it someone you're acquainted with? No, it isn't. I don't know anyone by that name. He certainly seemed concerned about her, though. So, what do you think of the election results? All right, the election. Who won? Leroy. He beat Atwood by a significant margin. Oh, I suppose that's good. I think I may have voted for him, but, but I'm not sure. How did you become choir master of this church? Oh, well, I, I studied music at the University of New Britannia. Once I completed my studies, I began writing symphonies in hopes of securing a patron, but I had no luck. So I decided to focus on choral compositions. I said a few pieces to the bishop, and he offered me the position. And you enjoy it? Oh, yes, sir. Immensely. I'm able to continue composing songs for our choir, as well as teach music to our young members. I take my church duties very seriously. What else do you do besides lead the choir? Just a few things here and there, making sure the aisles and the pews are clean, tending to the prayer candles, and that sort of thing. It seems that all the prayer candles have gone out. Have they? Blast! I keep saying there's a draft, but nobody's done anything about it. Excuse me for a moment, won't you? Let's hope this chest hasn't got squeaky hinges. Could I have another moment of... 
Yeah. Do you know anyone named Ned? Ned? Well, <laughs> yes, I do. My nephew, Ned Bunkridge. Your nephew? Yes. Why do you ask? Where might I find Ned? I'd like to speak with him. Is everything all right? Ned hasn't gotten into any trouble, has he? I always tell him just because he's training his body, that's no excuse to pick fights. No, he hasn't gotten into any trouble. Oh, well, uh, he lives in Lyon, 511 Parkside Terrace. Right. Thank you for the information. I'll let you resume your practicing, Mr. Puffin. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Right this way, sir. Mr. Bunkridge is in his gymnasium. Thank you, my good man. Well, you take a look at this place, and take a look at him. Maybe you should consider doing some training yourself, Miles. You aren't getting any younger, after all. Just when I thought I'd seen it all. What will they think of next? Excuse me, Mr. Bunkridge? Oh. Hello. Who are you? I'm Miles Fordham, a private investigator. Your ballot let me in. Right, of course. What can I do for you? I have a few questions for you, if you'd be so kind. Yes, all right. I could use a bit of a rest anyway. Are you familiar with a man named Ronan Lespay? Never heard of him. I have his portrait. Maybe you recognize him? No. I've never seen this man before, but... Huh. How about that? How about what? The detail in this ferrotype is a bit fuzzy, but his facial features and hair, they vaguely resemble mine. You know, now that he mentions it, it's true. The spade does bear a passing resemblance to this fellow. Not quite as handsome, though. So, you know nothing about the murder outside the Silent Raven four nights ago? That's right. I don't even know what the Silent Raven is. It's a bar in the Chum. Well, that explains it. For one thing, I don't go to that part of town. A man like me sets foot in that den of ruffians, and I'll have every Tom, Dick, and Harry challenging me to a fight. Not that I couldn't take them, but I have better ways to train my body than beating thugs. Anyway, I don't drink. Dulls the mind and softens the body. I see. Well, just thought I'd ask. I'm sorry I can't help you, Mr. Fordham, but I hope you solve whatever it is you're investigating. You seem like a nice enough sort. Tell me about your uncle. You know Tom? I've met him, yes. He's the one who told me where you lived. Oh, right. Well, my uncle is, uh, an interesting man. Is that an interesting of the good or bad variety? I really wish he would take better care of himself is all. I have the feeling that he's on some sort of drug, although he always denies it. What gives you that impression? Well, most of the time he acts completely normal. He goes to work, visits with me. Sometimes we go out together to the theater or a gallery. But some days his mood changes. He goes very solitary, won't leave his house, gets short with me. One time I went to visit him, I heard him yelling along with what sounded like furniture being knocked about. It only happened once, but it worried me. I hope Tom isn't in any sort of trouble. Opium is one hell of a drug. It's a good thing you never got to that point with the soporific, or Adelaide would have thrown you out much sooner. <coughs> Are you all right, Mr. Fordham? Yeah, yes. Yes, I'm fine. What? Too soon? Does the name Priscilla mean anything to you? Yes. Yes, it most certainly does. My lady love is named Priscilla Poundstone. I see. What can you tell me about her? Oh, she's a darling. I love her very much. Such a kind and gentle soul she is, too. Loves animals, especially dogs. We've been together for ages and are due to be married soon. When was the last time you saw her? Saw her? Oh, no, Mr. Fordham. She doesn't live in New Britannia. She attends Miss Threadneedle's Academy for Young Ladies in Cormorant. She lives in New Holland? That's right. 
I've never actually met Priscilla face to face. We communicate exclusively through correspondence. How did you two get involved? Her father and mine were old military friends. They decided between them that their children would be engaged. And you're both in agreement? Yes. I admit at first I was a bit hesitant, but we share many of the same interests. The distance between us is not a detriment to our love. I wonder how that will change once they actually begin cohabiting. Could you give me Tom's address? You don't have it? I thought you said you'd spoken with him. I visited him at the cathedral. But if he's there, why do you want his address? I have reason to believe he may be somehow involved in a murder. That's a serious accusation, Mr. Fordham. What proof do you have? Nothing concrete just yet, which is why I'd like to investigate his home. Well, you're not the police, so... I'm not obligated to tell you. I'm sorry, but you'll need more than just a suspicion to convince me. On second thought, never mind. So you correspond regularly with Priscilla? That's right. At least one letter a week. My uncle does me the kindness of acting as courier. Do you think I might have a look at one of those letters? What for? They're private correspondence. I understand, but I feel this is important. Perhaps you could show me one that isn't too personal. Hmm. Yes, I suppose that would be all right. In fact, I think there's a recent one on the shelf there. That's not too private. But you won't need to take it, will you? Not at all. I just want to have a look. You're very into physical conditioning, aren't you? Oh, you noticed. Yes, I believe that a healthy body is just as important as a healthy mind, if not more so. Well, he's definitely prioritizing the former. It's important to keep fit, especially at a job like mine where I'm in a chair most of the day. What job is that? I'm a clerk at the Bank of Vespuccia. But someday, I hope to leave and teach others about the health benefits of regular exercise. Perhaps even open up my own gymnasium. <laughs> He actually thinks people are going to go for that. Good luck to him. Thanks for your time. Not a problem. Wait just a minute. Something's off here. The handwriting in this letter is different to the one we found before. There's something strange going on with this Priscilla. Could I ask you a few more? All right, but try not to take too long. Don't want to drop my heart rate too much. About your uncle's- What about? I think there's something going on between him and Priscilla. Something going on? What do you mean? I found a letter addressed to you from her at the cathedral, and the handwriting is different to the letter you have here. He has one of her letters? Why would he? I'm not sure, which is why I'd like to search his home and find out more. If he's going behind my back, I swear I'll... Calm yourself, Mr. Bunkridge. If I find anything, you'll be the first to know. All right. Tom lives at 117 Gimlet Terrace in Worcester. Hey, we're practically neighbors. Here, I've got a spare key. If you find anything about him and Priscilla, you'll tell me, won't you? Of course. Thank you, Mr. Bunkridge. Thanks for your time. Not a problem. Nice place. Tidy. Nothing incriminating that I can see. People rarely leave anything incriminating out in the open. It's time to have a look around. 